Hello there, back again. Right, I've done a bit more of this image for you. Um, it's just a nice little sketch, one of my favourite little things that you can just sit and enjoy. Um, but what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of watercolour for you. So uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I've just got one of the little, little Winsor & Newton travel palettes, which are really handy. You don't have to use Winsor & Newton. These great little things, they come out the pans, you can change them whenever you run out or whatever. It'll take most different things, but it's really handy. So you can mix all your colours up on here. Now the great thing is this is a, a woody scene, so we only think need greens and sort of browny shades and rusties. So we're just going to mix some of the bit of a brownie colour. So it's not really a demonstration about what colours I'm using but just to show you how uh, the dynamic of the black and white changes when you start to add some colour in. The way it starts to pop out a little bit more and you start to actually see the picture as to what it is. Now this is just the same shade of a brownish mix but because you've already put all your lovely dark shading in it's literally a very thin wash just applied over the whole thing in the areas you want it. I only want it on the tree so I'm going to have different coloured woods for the little window sill so that it stands out I'm not worried about the foliage yet or anything like that. I'm just putting a very watery wash of a brownie shade. In fact, if you can see the palette, that's how watery it is. Okay, it's quite pale and thin. But that's all you need. Just pop it on. And as it dries, if you apply a second layer it will form a slightly darker shade. It's a, it's a layering technique, you see. So once you've put one um, layer of watercolour and you've let it dry, then if you go over it again with the same thickness of layer, it will, of course, be a little bit darker because it's applying the layers over the top. So it gets deeper and deeper and you you're basically have two layers of watercolour rather than one. So I'll demonstrate that here. That should be dryish now, but if I put the same mix here, just in this little area, you'll see it's a little bit darker. But that's just because I put two layers in that area now. There you go. So as you can see, it's really quite effective. I think my tree is starting to pop out a little bit more instead of just being a boring little black and white thing. There we go. If you apply your layer while the top, while it's still wet, you shouldn't end up with a darker version. Just It's only when the layers have dried. If you apply another layer over the top, it will appear darker. So while this is wet, keep adding the same wash layer and dragging it through and spreading it. And that way you'll end up with a nice, even effect right through. There we go. Still wet here, so I'll pop another layer over. And that first layer is still the same layer. There's no second layer on until it's dried and you go over it again. I hope that makes some sense. As I said, I'm new to this, so it'll be interesting to see what you make of it all. I haven't tested these yet, so I don't even know if you can hear me. Right, there we go. So that's sort of a brownish colour over our tree trunk. I'm going to add some of this similar brownish colour onto our little footpath. But not all over, just in little streets. You notice I'm going in the direction that I feel the footpath would go. I think it would go horizontally rather than in a vertical shape. So there we go. 
So my little wooden door, instead of using just a brown, I'm going to put a little bit of sienna in it so it'll go a bit more rusty colour. So we're going to have a, like a rusty brown door, but it will help it to stand out against the tree, which I think is an oak tree myself. There we go. So it's the same brown. I've just added some nice uh, burnt sienna to it, which is sort of a reddish colour to my recollection. There we go. And it's added like a coppery coppery colour to the door. I mean, you don't have to do your door this colour, by the way. You could do it in a painted colour, maybe a green or something like that, or even a blue if you want. So I'm also going to do the window frame and the little wooden piece that it's sat on in the same colour. That way they just stand out a little bit still from the tree. Don't worry if you get a bit on the tree. I'm still looking through my tripod here, so it's not going to be the neatest finish for me. I will set up something better so that I can actually show you properly what we're doing. There we go. Now, a bit of fun. I'm going to get a nice little olive green. And I'm going to mix it again with the same colour I've just done the doors with and the window. But make sure that there's more green than the rusty sienna colour. And this is going to be some of our mossy bits. Now, there are some mossy bits on the tree too. Because trees are not just plain old brown. In fact, there are lots of different shades in the bark. So if you add a little dash of this, it'll give it a bit of a, a lift. So we're going to add some of this and create some of our mossiness. You can put it wherever you like it. As you notice, the ballpoint pen is not running. Everybody seems to think that the ballpoint pen will bleed, but it doesn't. That is why I love it. Just as long as you don't put tons and tons of water. This is just a, a damp mix again, you see. There we are. Same one, nothing too wet. And I'm just applying nice little sweeps of colour. Okay, so that's that shade of green. I think now we need a slightly different shade of green. So we go for more of a bluey green now. And mix that again. You can mix it in with the same colour that you've just used. But we're using more of a bluey, a bluey green. We're going to put that in as well and mix it in where you've been with your other green as well, anywhere you fancy. And it'll just give, you get different contrasts then with your greens. See those little pebbles now showing through? It sort of brings it to life, I think. I really like doing this. There we go. Just add a bit of green wherever you fancy. Might even have a bit on the step too, I think. Just stroke it along. Into the path a little bit. There we go, we're getting there. Mix up a little bit more brown now. And we'll just lightly put some on the steps, not too much. There we go. And then we have to think about the pebbles. I think we'll have the pebbles in a grey colour. Uh, grey is a bit trickier to mix if you haven't got a black. So I'm just going to have a go and see what sort of a greyish colour I can come up with. It's sort of a purpley grey by the looks of it. So a bit of blue, a bit of brown. There we go. That's quite grey, I think, isn't it? It's a nice bluey grey. Put that on some of these little 
paved areas here. Now then, what colour? That's another pebble. Shall we have our mushrooms? Well, they are obviously the star of the show now. Oh, I'm going to use just a bit more of this bluey grey up on my window. I'm going to go over the entire window because it's a little wash layer and it will dry as you see it where it's paler it will dry paler there you go okay so what color mushrooms should we have well i'm thinking of reddish but they're not fly agaric which is our beautiful toadstools that everybody likes so i'm going to do them gosh a Perhaps a cherry red with a bit of purplish to them. So we've got a mix here that's like a purplish red. Okay. I'm just doing that little bit for the moment. I'm just going to dry my brush off a bit. Okay, well this is still wet with the drier brush because that was quite a bit of a wet mix. I'm just going over it and spreading it while it's still wet. There. There we go. They're quite nice. And a little bit of a greyy colour for the stems, just a little bit. This is sort of a greyish beige, which is a very pale brown. You can make it nice and pale by just making sure it's not too thick. I've got quite a thin brush here, but I'm going to try and add something to that background, but just a very, very pale wash again. There we go. Just a pale wash on the back of here. And then we'll see what it looks like. Just spread your wash in the same direction as the lines, if you wish. What I sometimes like to do here as well, if you don't want any lines, I like to get a little bit of tissue Oops, a daisy, and catch it before it dries. Just dab it off a little bit. There we go, it's not too bad. Uh, whoop. That's a good thing about watercolour, you can just catch that there. Right, not super duper, but something for you to look at and have a go at. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me do this. I would like to do some better videos and, as I said, eventually do some real nice online tutorial courses. Take care for now. Bye.